What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out what I think is one of the best new features in D5 Render, the ability to save and use different presets. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is something that was contained inside of the newest version of D5 Render, version 2.5. And basically what it is, is it's a, it, it's a way for you to save different presets for your scene. So first off, you're gonna find this inside of D5 Studio. So you can access that by clicking on this button right here. Now, one thing to note about this is depending on if you're using the pro version or the community version, um, the pro version is gonna give you access to 10 gigabytes of storage as well as access to D5 curated, which we'll take a look at in a second. Um, the other version is going to allow you to save up to five presets. I don't know if that's five presets total or if it's five of each of the different types, but um, basically that's how this is going to work. And so a lot of the time what you wanna do is you wanna be able to jump back and forth between different times of day, other things like that. Right? So let's say that we've got this scene right here and we like the way that it looks. Well, what we can do is we can go into D5 Studio right here and we can either create a folder or you can also select a type. In this case, I'm gonna say an environment and an effect and I'm gonna click on the plus button. And what it's going to do, and I'm just gonna call this daytime right here. And we could create a folder. I'm just going to put it in my default folder. Um, and just note that you want to save your environment and your effect. We're going to click on the save button right here. What that's going to do is that's going to save your environment settings over here on the right hand side so you can get back to them later. So let's say that you came in here and you made a change, right? So let's say that instead of using the HDRI, we changed this so that it was more of a nighttime type scene like this right? A little bit of clouds in the background, whatever. Um, so now we've got this scene over here that's kind of more of a nighttime scene. Let's say we wanted to jump back to the daytime scene. All you have to do is just open up that D5 Studio, go find that environment effect, and you can double click on it. When you double click on it, what that's going to do is that's going to apply that environment effect to the scene right here. Okay, and so let's say that we added a custom HDRI image. And so I'm gonna go to customize HDR. I'm going to select this HDRI file um, that's an EXR format that I downloaded from HDRI Haven. So we're gonna bring this in. Notice how that's lighting my scene. And then you can come in here and you can make adjustments to the rotation um, so that this looks the way that you want it to look. But say that this is like our custom HDRI file, we'll notice how if we go into D5 Studio and we save this preset, all right, so I'm gonna click on the plus button right here, and we're gonna call this um, daytime, and then the name of the HDRI, which is Scythian Tombs 2. And we're gonna click on save. And so when we do that, notice what that's going to do is that's going to save this preset in here with that HDRI file, right? That HDRI, fi that HDRI file is being saved with your environment and effect right here so you can access it later. And so notice how this is telling me or showing me that I've used 401 megabytes of storage right here, right? And that's gonna include all of the different files that I'm using in here. I'm a little surprised that it's that much storage um, because this HDRI file was like 22 megabytes. So I'm not sure what else is being saved in there, but you can save your environment or effect settings in there. Now, one thing that I find really helpful, and I have the pro version, but there's this D5 curated in here. This D5 curated has presets in here that they've created, which to me is massively helpful. So notice how I'm able to come in here and I'm able to add this exterior fog cloudy. Um, I can do their exterior sunny if you want to do that. Um, you can do the exterior dawn. Notice how some of these need to be downloaded. That's probably why I'm using so much storage is because I've downloaded some of these in here. But um, you can download a lot of these different presets. Like say we wanted this exterior cloudy. We'll go ahead and we'll download this. And now I can access this preset in my scene as well. So having access to all of these different presets in here is massively valuable to me, especially because these are curated, meaning that somebody that knows a lot about the way these are set up has kind of come in here and kind of set these up. So um, you can use this in order to save those environments and, and access them really quickly. Now let's go back into our space and note that there are also 
other options in here for other presets. So let's go ahead and let's create a folder for brushes. So I'm just gonna come in here, I'm just gonna call this brush right here. And so what we wanna do is we want to create a brush. So we're gonna go to tools, brush, and so I do have more D5 render content on my list in the future, so um, I can go back and talk through um, some of the different tools and things like that. That's uh, coming up in the next couple months on this channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. So let's say that we wanted to create a custom brush in here. Say we wanted to add some shrubs, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find a couple shrubs in here. So this one right here maybe and this one right here. And so I'm gonna select these. And so you can see these assets right here. I'm gonna adjust the radius up like this. And I may jump back into the studio really quick and just set this to be more of a sunny day just so you can see a little bit better. But now what I have is I have a brush that's gonna allow me to add these plants in the background, right? So I've got this brush ready to go, but then you can click on this button right here to add this as a preset, right? And in my presets, you can set your folder, right? So I'm gonna call this brush, and I'm gonna call this one shrubs, right here. And I'm gonna click on save. So when I do that, what that's going to do is that's gonna give me quick access to this brush in the future. So say that I created another one, so we're gonna create one with grasses. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select all of these plants that I just downloaded, and we could call this one grasses or whatever we want, right? But this one is going to give us the ability to scatter these grasses and shrubs in here. I may make it a little bit smaller like this, but that's my grass brush right here, right? Well, what I could do is I could click on the button to save this as a preset. And in this case, inside of our brushes, we're gonna call this one grass one. I'm gonna click on save. And then say I wanted to load this grass brush, I could just double click on it. And notice how now I'm ready to come in here and start painting grass in my scene, just like this. So you can quickly save those brushes. All right, so you can also use this to save paths. So say that I had this window open, or if I clicked right here in order to create a character path like this, I've selected some walking models in here, but let's say that I was to add just a path right here. We'll just say people are walking down the street is all that we need. And so we've created this path over here with our characters and I'm gonna adjust it up so I've got like higher density. Um, I'm gonna adjust it so that my path is wider. Um, like this, you could add different models in here if you wanted to, but now we've got this walking people path. Well, if we really like this path, what we can do is we can click up here to create a preset. And in this case, I'm going to, I wish there was an option to create your own folder in here. So I'm going to create a folder for paths right here. And then we'll go ahead and click in order to save this. We're going to save this in paths and we're going to say characters walking. And we're going to click on save. And so now we can access that again if we want to add an additional path. So say we wanted to add characters right here. We could just double click in order to activate path mode. And notice how I can use this in order to add another instance to that path right here. So this gives us the ability to save environments as well as brushes and paths, which to me is extremely valuable because it means I don't have to go recreate that effort in every single model that I render in the future. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these features if you're using D5 Render. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you wanna check out D5 Render, I'll link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.